but time. hi guys so let's start the next episode of 5 mcqs in 5 minute through which we are actually revising five important pyqs this series is important for neat pg and ict and also for our fmg aspirants let's go and see what do we have in our today's session the very first question that we have is about a 55 year old man who was given an agent named torsemide do remember guys torsemide is uh, from the family of uh, loop diuretics same like furosemide torsemide it is one of the loop diuretics important points is that the site of action of loop diuretic it is mainly acting at the thick ascending limb of loop of henle mainly acting at the thick ascending limb of loop of henle by inhibiting a transporter that is sodium potassium two chloride co transporter they act by inhibiting hashtag sign is for inhibiting here do remember that loop diuretics as the diuretics it mainly causes loss of calcium because they are causing loss of calcium they will be associated with your hypocalcemia loop diuretic is a very very preferred diuretic in any cases of congestion in kahin pe bhi congestion hai edema hai we can prefer the loop diuretics in addition to that we can also use them in the treatment of the hypercalcemia the only ion that i have written here is calcium but calcium is not the only thing that is going to decrease in addition to that they will also cause loss of sodium loss of potassium magnesium everything will actually decrease loop loses calcium right in addition to that if i compare thiazide diuretics thiazide diuretics they mainly increase the level of calcium they also increase the level of uric acid that is how we also remember that thiazide diuretics can also precipitate your gout now let's read the option that we have preferred in hypercalcemia can we use them in hypercalcemia patient because they are loop diuretics yes we can use them in hypercalcemia they cause hypercalcemia no they cause hypocalcemia they cause what hypocalcemia and they not cause they do not cause hyperkalemia hyper ne hypokalemia ka cause karega and inhibiting the uric acid excretion or i would say increasing the uric acid level is mainly caused by thiazide diuretics correct answer for this one is a next one is uh, is about a recently approved drug selexi pack is uh, used for pulmonary artery hypertension it mainly act by selexi pack it's a very sexy drug now why do i call it as a very sexy drug because most of the pg i2 analog that we know that is drugs like your epoprostenol epoprostenol eloprost tprostenil tprostenil they are actually given by iv root subcutaneous route or inhalational route like for example eloprost is available by the inhalational route as well but selexi pack it's one of the pgi2 analog that is available pgi2 receptor analog that is mainly available by orally so that is why i call it is a very sexy drug they are the preferred drug pgi2 analog is mainly preferred in advanced or i would say grade 4 pulmonary artery hypertension advanced or grade 4 pulmonary artery hypertension we are going to prefer them okay so correct answer for this one that selexi pack is a sexy drug they are the prostacycline receptor agonist prostacycline receptor agonist now let's read other option that we are having in the list here other options like for example endothelin receptor antagonist that is going to be drugs like your embrisentan bosentan mesentan their name itself is having endothelin antagonist they are the drug of choice in a patient with the pulmonary artery hypertension pulmonary artery hypertension may grade 2 uh, and grade 3 may they are the drug of choice direct activator of nitric oxide or soluble guanyl cyclase this is going to be drugs by the name of riosiguat there are many other drugs riosiguat vericiguat sinasiguat riosiguat is one of them guanyl cyclase activator that is also increasing the sensitivity for nitric oxide phosphodiesterase inhibitor is all time favorite drug for all of you guys your favorite blue pill that is sildenafil earlier it was used for pulmonary artery hypertension but now it is a preferred drug in erectile dysfunction but we still can use them in pulmonary artery hypertension now it is very commonly utilized as a fixed dose combination with the embrisentan or other endothelin receptor antagonist correct answer for this question is d next one resicadotril resicadotril guys it's one of the enkephalinase inhibitor now for you to understand enkephalinase inhibitor what is the advantage that we are getting remember there is something known as your endogenous opioid and opioid in our body they are supposed to cause on git they will always cause constipation endogenous opioid that we have by the name of enkephalin you must have heard about uh, endorphin dynorphin enkephalin right so enkephalin is one of the endogenous opioid they mainly cause what this uh, enkephalin that we have they mainly cause constipation that is they are going to decrease the intestinal motility and they also decrease the intestine ka secretion but the problem is that that this enkephalin it is rapidly and readily getting metabolized it's getting inactivated by an endogenous enzyme by the name of your enkephalinase what is the name enkephalinase they are getting metabolized by enkephalinase okay 
Now, if you want this to happen, if you want the constipation or decrease in the intestinal motility or decrease the intestinal secretion, what you should do, you should inhibit this enkephalinase. You see, if you inhibit enkephalinase, what will happen to the level of enkephalin? That will increase and in, there, there will be decrease in the intestinal motility, decrease in the secretion and they are mainly utilized in secretory kind of diarrhea. Very safe also in a pediatric population, you know, secretory diarrhea, elderly population, pediatric population, a highly safe drug. Resicadotril, you know, they are the enkephalinase inhibitor. Agent not used in sequential therapy. Sequential therapy, like you must have read previously, you have read already triple therapy. You have read already quadruple therapy. Now, INICT aspirant will pay attention here. Triple and quadruple you have read already. But now we are having sequential therapy where we are having day 1 to 5 different group of antibiotic. And from day 6 to 10, we are having different group of antibiotic. What they are saying that you give PPI in all the scenario. Along with PPI, you are supposed to give your amoxicillin. 1 gram amoxicillin, 1 gram amoxicillin twice daily for 5 days. Then after that, you what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to continue the PPI and now you give, uh, now you give other group of antibiotics that is your clarithromycin, clarithromycin and also you can util, uh, utilize your metronidazole. Okay, so metronidazole or tindazole, either of them you can utilize uh, depending on the availability, preferred one is metronidazole. Now do remember this one, you are using the same antibiotic of triple therapy because triple therapy we also we are using CAMP, clarithromycin, amoxicillin and your uh, metronidazole and PPI but antibiotic here is given in sequence. Uh, colloidal bismuth subsalicylate is mainly utilized in quadruple therapy. Ye quadruple therapy mein mainly is used in CBS. All other agents can be utilized. Metronidazole will be utilized uh, or tinidazole as an alternative. So, we use it. Last question, doxylamine. Doxylamine, doxinate ke naam se aata hai. It's always uh, na, given. Uh, na, it's always going to be given with vitamin B6. Doxylamine mainly utilized for your morning sickness. Do remember doxylamine, it's a highly sedative group of H1 antagonist. H1 antagonist. Hai na? Maclizine, buclizine, they can be utilized. Maclizine, buclizine, they can be utilized in C sickness. Motion sickness, ke liye, we are having uh, drugs like your, we can utilize, let's say, uh, hyoscine or scopolamine. Hyoscine, yeah, scopolamine, that is the same, two other, two different names. Alternatively, other first line is also your promethazine. Now, what is the difference? Promethazine again is the H1 antagonist that is having anticholinergic property and they are M3 antagonist. Mountain sickness ke liye, we will be utilizing acetazolamide. Acetazolamide, it's one of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Right? So, all the different types of sickness I have also summarized here. Morning sickness, liye, doxylamine and vitamin B6. Isko dete hai. Right? So, this will be your five important MCQs. Time ek dominant upar niche ho I hope all of you guys can understand that. But again, what's the point here is very rapidly whenever you're opening the phone, scrolling the phone, five minutes kaise bhi jate pata nahi chalte hai. And we are trying to utilize that five minutes. And that is five minutes I will be needing from all of you guys. So, I hope that you guys will continue to, you know, like, share and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next class. Thank you very much.